I don't know how it happened, but I met disaster the other day with the Camaro. I was trying to adjust the speedometer because the needle was showing me going a little faster than I was. And I took some advice that I had gathered from the third gen forums and that needle I just showed you just snapped right off so I took the whole cluster out disassembled the uh, speedometer completely and wow I don't even know what to say right now um, I've purchased another cluster but it's not a 145 cluster it's an 85 I'm hoping to just replace the needle um, but we'll see if that fixes it I may have to buy a 145 speedometer which is rare to find anymore uh, I could only find one listing on eBay for a speedometer one listing for an entire cluster which I don't exactly need um, and they're both pretty pricey so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do at this point if I've learned anything from this experience with the speedometer it is that on this car specifically uh, if you need to make any adjustments to your speedometer needle uh, do not try to force it out uh, you, it's something you really need to be careful with your speedometer needle is attached to this pin which goes the entire length of the gauge the entire depth uh, and mine broke off at this tip right here. It's hard to really see. Let's see if that'll focus. I don't think it will. You can see that little, little tip right there that remains. Well, that's what didn't break off. Um, had I went from the rear of the gauge instead of the front, I could have removed it and possibly adjusted it without causing this break. Right now I'm considering all options available uh, to get this resolved. Uh, this is a restoration. It's not a modification. I am not looking at any digital dashes uh, or aftermarket gauges um, I have gotten a couple leads on places that do restoration work for gauges and dashes and and the like and I've reached out to those companies uh, but until then pretty much my car is gonna be off the road even though in a few days I'm actually going to finally get license plates for it uh, which in Indiana we have a pretty cool thing where if you have a classic car and you're restoring it you can actually put license plates from the year it was new on it and drive with it uh, the only real stipulation is that the vehicle is not used for daily driver transportation usage it's used for car meets and car shows and the like which this car is I do think I'm going to replace all of the bulbs in the cluster itself um, I did just notice that one of the bulbs is missing and I don't know how long these bulbs have been in here some of them are probably original uh, one thing I have noticed is that my oil pressure gauge right here it, it kind of jerks it doesn't move smoothly 
so I don't know if that is an issue with the sending unit or with the gauge itself. So this is just something I'm going to have to test out and see. I'm also going to check the gears in the transmission to make sure they are the correct ones and also check the gearing on the car itself in the rear end just to ensure it is what it is supposed to be. Uh, I know that sometime early on my dad and my stepmother had issues with the transmission but what was done to resolve that issue was not entirely made clear to me. So I don't know if a rebuilt transmission was put in, if the original was rebuilt, uh, if a junker was thrown in. I, I really don't have a concrete answer on this. So, yippee skippy. Update. I discovered it wasn't the transmission that was replaced. It was actually the ring and pinion gear on the rear end, which is why my speedometer was reading incorrectly high. Um, I did a test, which I posted the video to on YouTube, but I'll add it in this clip as well, just for uh, documentation purposes and explanation. I put my camera down on the ground below my uh, drive shaft and then I spun the tire one turn and from what I can tell the drive shaft spun about three and a half times. Now there is no 3.5 gear that I've been able to find for a GM 10 bolt rear end but there is a 345 and that's what I'm thinking the rear end has in it at this point. One thing I have done however is ordered materials and contact cement to replace the headliner which has really really gotten bad uh, and I should have enough material to also recover the sail panels. And with that, my interior is almost done. I just have to wait for the materials to get here in order to do the job. So I'm pretty excited about that. 